Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Bosch Legacy Season 1, Episode 3. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Uh, first and foremost, let's start off with Maddie and Vasquez's um, side of the story. Um, obviously, like they're hanging out, getting like donuts or something at the beginning, and... Um, kind of just deepening their partnership, which at first, when, the mo when they started talking about the movies and stuff, I had to rewind. I was like, wait, are they talking about who I think they are? I didn't realize that place is uh, Trejo's, which I, I can own, just based on the co context of the conversation, I'm like, oh, I wonder is that a real place that Danny Trejo owns in California or something? I was like, oh, that's interesting. I know there's plenty of, like, you never know what businesses, like, people, like, are attached to and stuff like that, but regardless, and then, like, you know, Vasquez is like, oh, have you seen any of his movies? And she's like, and Maddie's like, I don't think so. I, w I It's not a rant, but I'm just like, wait, what? Maddie, how is that possible? How have you never seen a Danny Trejo movie? That's impossible. I was flabbergasted by that. I'm like, they, they didn't touch TV shows, but obviously he's been in TV. It's almost like, I don't know. I would almost assume that she's never seen any, him with anything in TV as well. Because I'm like, but come on. He's been in so much. It's like, you have to have seen something Danny Trejo's in. It's, it's, it's fucking Danny Trejo. You know? It's like... Because uh, she references Machete. There was another one she referenced too, but also she referenced From Dust to Dawn. I love that movie. That's probably one of my favorite classic movies. I love that movie so much. Um, I mean, we look back on that cast. Fucking George Clooney, Quentin Tarantino, Harvey Keitel, uh, Juliette Lewis. Freaking um, Selma Hayek is in that. Come on, dude. I even think... Um, I believe, cause I also believe Danny Trejo is also in the second one. I don't remember. He might be in the third one too. I don't remember. I I remember the first and second one. I don't remember the third one as much. But I mean, uh, just throwing that aside, he was even in. The, I I really, if you've never seen the uh, TV show, the TV series from Dusted, I highly recommend, you, highly recommend you check it out. He's also in that for a bit as well. So you know, but also it's like Breaking Bad. The, he made a few appearances in the Flash too. Once again, I'm going on this whole tangent, but that just, I was, I couldn't let that go to the moment she's like, oh, I haven't seen it. I'm like, you, you can't say you've never seen anything with Danny Trejo in it. That's wild to me. Because it's, it, once again, it's Danny Trejo. It just feels like so impossible. I know it's a stupid thing to get caught up on, but I was like, man, I couldn't drop that. But she was like, fast because I was like, oh, you should check, check out some, some, she mentioned some really good movies of like that Danny Trejo is in. But regardless, Tangents aside, kind of starting off with some levity because their side of the story is pretty... I mean, there's other depressing aspects to the episode, but uh, they uh, it ends up going into this interesting conversation about why each of them join. And it's like, right, for Maddie, which even I said, I, I brought it up in the first episode, is still like shocked by the trajectory of where her life is because I never would have seen her as a cop. Yeah, your mom and your dad's circumstances, but still never would have seen you going down that path. But I guess maybe because her parents are cops, it seems like she'd be... More likely to, but I found that fascinating when her and Vasquez had that conversation. Like, oh, wow, your dad being a cop, because everyone kind of knows about Harry. I was like, oh, Eleanor, your mom being an FBI agent, so it's kind of in your blood. So that's kind of even more reason why she kind of did this. And Va uh, Vasquez gets asked by Maddie, like, why she does it. And she's like, oh, the overtime. And Maddie's kind of laughing because she's like, I can't tell if you're joking. Because she was like, it's a way to get for, like up to middle class. And I was like, she says, like, no, like, when they're responding to um, an attack, and she was like, this is why I do it, just because, you know, taking down bad guys because people need to be there. But I'm like, I think that might correlate to what she was referencing. I was like, oh, she must be from, like, a, you know, a poor family, and at least being a cop gives you probably, like, uh, like a pension and benefits that, you know, make it worth it. Like she said, just even get to middle class. It seems like that might be what she's referencing, but also like maybe people who might fall through the cracks. Maybe that's also why she's like, right. This is, I mean, to, to help out people and, uh, but also to uh, maybe help people who might fall through the cracks. Maybe that's what it's a reference to, but, um, they, uh, show up in a, a victim. Um, a lady, uh, was attacked, which I was, I was like, why does that actress seem so familiar? Like most recently she was in, um, uh, Ordinary Joe, she played uh, Joe's manager, I believe, in the um, the musician timeline, the mu musician reality. If you've seen Ordinary Joe, you know what I'm talking about. But I was like, oh, okay. Um, but it turns out she was attacked, and I think this is the first time Maddie's ever dealt with something like that because it like it it hit like it struck a chord with her. And so Maddie like laid out some like, oh, this is some evidence here and there. And so when the detective steps in, Detective Coleman. Uh, Maddie was like, oh, there was a tissue in a basket, and maybe it was just, and uh, Vasquez gives her kind of a look, and Coleman almost kind of goes, 
okay, like, uh, take the victim to, like, a hospital to kind of, I think, like, you know, a rape kit type of situation, so... I'm assuming this has something to do with, like, it was mentioned in episode, I want to say it was last episode, maybe episode one they referenced it, maybe, but I think it was episode two, they referenced some person on the loose, and I'm wondering, is there a correlation between, I forgot what it was, but it was like when um, their uh, lieutenant was, like, handing out uh, assignments and stuff like that, being like, oh, there's a person that's on the loose, watch out for this attacker, I'm wondering, is there some correlation in this particular uh, case to this, uh, but the person who attacked her. And, um, it is a thing of, yeah, kind of stay, Maddie kind of goes like, stay in my lane. And she's like, yes, uh, Vasquez is like, yeah, stay in your lane. Because not only are you, are, we're, she's the detective. She kind of has a lead on this. So we just kind of have to listen to what she said. Like, kind of just stay in our lane, especially you out of anyone. Because that's why Vasquez was doing most of the talking. Because it's like, right, she's, she has a seniority here. And obviously the, uh, Detective Coleman has a given bigger seniority in this case, so she's taking over. And on the drive there, like, the, la the lady, she's in the back, and she's crying, because obviously it's still just a fresh wound to her from everything that happened. And Maddie adjusts the uh, mirror to kind of look at her, to keep an eye on her. And I think, in that moment, you could tell Vasquez is probably like, right, you probably don't want to do that, because you're getting a little too attached. To the point that Maddie actually gave her her number and was like, hey, um, I told her if she needed anything, like, because she starts warning, like, right, if he's done this... If he did this, he most likely did it before. And it's like, yeah, that's the sad aspect of it. He's most like this probably wasn't his first victim. He's probably done it before, most likely. Um, and she's Maddie can't let it go. But Vasquez is like, you need to let it go. She's like, I gave the gave her my numbers. Like, why would you do that? Don't do that. You're gonna screw up the investigation if she called you. Because I think it's almost that thing of it kind of goes out. Because anything that maybe she says to Maddie could be like thrown out during like any like court proceedings and stuff like that because it, it's almost like a chain of evidence of it like maddie isn't the official officer on the in the investigation because as a boot she doesn't have like the position and authority to actually work the case so like anything said to her from the victim could be inadmissible and it could threaten a case because it might be a thing of right because you got this information we can't actually use it so Maybe that's what she meant, like, it will threaten the investigation. But she's telling Maddie to let it go, but Maddie won't. Because very much like both Harry and Eleanor, she's very stubborn, like both of her parents. So she ha she's unlikely to let it go. So that's definitely going to be interesting um, to see where things kind of go. And I think, I think this speaks volumes, too, about, like, her and Vasquez's perspectives. And maybe this will change, but... Uh, Maddie knows her name, and and you have Vasquez being like, what? And she was like, you know, she was like, the Thai woman, and then Vasquez was like, oh, the rape victim. Like, that's how she associates her, and her brain didn't even recognize her name, and then she was like, oh, the Thai woman, that wasn't enough of it. It was, but she still had to go like, oh, yeah, the rape victim. It's like, yeah. So, I think that speaks volumes. But once again, it's just like, yeah, we see how Harry can get about, like, right, the three cases that he couldn't let go. You know, so I think Maddie's got a little bit of that. So it, it, it's this case really struck a chord with her. So I think this is going to be part of her overarching story. I mean, I think that's going to lead to some issues of her not letting this go. But but Maddie's also about trying to do the right thing, too. So it's going to be interesting to see where things kind of go on that front. But um, other than that, this episode, we had... Uh, Chandler and Harry visiting uh, Willie Dats and trying to get him inform get information from him about why he dropped the um, all his like accusations against um, tying uh, all the uh, hits last season, even the attempt on Chandler and stuff to uh, Carl Rogers. And you had uh, Chandler once again. You've never seen her like this because she has a personal vendetta in it, and once again. It won't alleviate any of the stuff that she's carrying until um, until this is settled. So she's like, oh, yeah, this duo Rahul, Rahul yeah, uh, he kind of owes me. Oh, he's in the same prison. In fact, in the same cell block as you. It kind of suck if he come pay you a visit. It's like, you can't do that. You're a lawyer. It's like, oh, no. But, I mean, Rahul, maybe he feels the need to come after you and stuff like that. So it's like, fine, call him off. And so even Harry is like, yo, you're uh, threatening that uh, – your acting there was kind of pretty good. And he was like, she's like, what makes you think I was um, pretending or whatever? Which she ended up having to tell her boss. Because he's like, yo, how did you get Willie Dats to recant what he, you know, give you any information? It's like, I told him it was in his best interest. How? Uh, 
at Raul. It's like, do you threaten him? No. All I said is that, you know, something might have happened to me and Raul, who owes me a favor, might feel inclined because of that, because of our connection, that he might do something to you because you had some association with what happened to me. And it's like, yeah, it's like, so you did threaten him. And it's like, oh, I don't like this line that, like, make sure you don't cross the line. She's like, I know what side of the line I'm on. He's like, I worry about you, Chan. Because she's, because it's like, okay, so you called it off, right? She's like, maybe, but I also can't help it if Raul decides to do something on his own and Martin's looking at her and she's like, I'm joking. Because part of me was like, is she going to say like, oh, she never actually like went out to Raul in the first place? So it's like, no, it seems like she did. Because it's like, no, I'm not going to have you think I'm bluffing completely. So I did set the groundwork. And if Raul decides to do something, she probably did tell Raul to back down. But for him, it's like, you could tell it rubbed Martin around because he's like, I'm worried about you. Because, yeah, she's not okay. Like, this is a personal vendetta for her. And I think things are going to get complicated because of that. Because obviously it's still very shaky for her. I'm trying to remember if this was last episode or if it was this episode because things are kind of bleeding together sometimes. Um, where she was having someone work on like like her lawn outside and she sees a person again who attacked her, but this time she shoots him. But obviously it was all in her head because she has been going to the range. And so this whole Carl Rogers thing is really, you know, she, she brought it up in therapy last episode, how she wants to hunt him down and kill him herself. But, you know, she's like, because of civilization, I won't do it. I don't think Chandler will do it. But the fact is it's rummaging through her mind over and over again. Like she's feeling that urge. It's like, it's for her. I think that is the only means of, finding some semblance of being okay in the aftermath of all this, so. They, um, Harry continues, like, you know, following Carl around. It ends up following him downtown where he's meeting up with Alex and, um, God, what's his brother's name? I'm already blanking on it now. Either way, both of those, uh, both of the siblings and they're basically pumping him for money. He was initially got a 10 million buy-in from them, but now they want 40 million back. And he's like, I can't do that. You know, my operations are kind of slowed down because while I was in jail, I was like, that's kind of not our problem. You got to wait to give us that money. And it's like, right, jumpstart operations. It's like, right, if we do things too quickly, it's going to draw too much attention. They don't care. I feel like that... I guess is they're trying to make an example of him. It's like, right, are you going to prove not to be... Because, I once again, I felt like they brought home... Lev, that's his name. Sorry, I just remembered. I feel like they brought Lev in because they're still planning on killing Carl. But they're probably trying to get like the money and stuff out there first. And then trying to keep operations going. But the moment things pick up, they'll probably... They're, they're okay with um, him getting too much attention. Because they're probably going to kill him. And that will and cover up any trails connected to him. Because I didn't talk about it last episode. But they did... Um, uh, kill that guy at the gas station. I, I didn't talk about that last episode. Because it does come back. Because uh, Mo had traced back some burner cell phone to that particular gas station and now Harry found out like a lot of the businesses in that building like their front and one of them was that gas station that the uh burner was traced back to so it's like right what's the connection to all this so it seems like that gas station for whatever reason is one of their uh front one of the business fronts that's connected in all of this so because apparently they did that because once again someone stole money um that guy was accused of it, but we don't know if that... I mean, it, the fact is they killed him seemed like, yeah, he pretty much did, but regardless. Harry was, pre obviously because of Harry's, you know, experience and stuff, luckily he did hide his identity. He was pretty... He made sure to hide anything distinctive. He made sure to wear a, ball, um, a baseball cap and, like, kind of keep his head tilted so he wouldn't get caught on camera. And he rolled down his sleeve so that he could cover up his tattoo so he doesn't have anything... Because that is, you know, he has very discerning tattoos. So, like, you don't want to give anyone any ammunition they could use to try and find you. So, Because, obviously, both of um, these siblings are bad news bears. It seems like Lev is kind of like, he's the hitter. Like, he's the one that really does a lot of the heavy lifting. Alex is more so the brains. But it's like, no, he can get his hands dirty, too, if need be. So... Luckily, Harry was able to get out of there um, and escape from them. That was a uh, pretty uh, close, though. But they do know someone's on to them. So once again, they're going to be on the lookout. Once again, luckily, Harry didn't have any discerning features that they could make out. 
Uh, all they have is the security camera footage, but, you know, that's not going to be good enough. But you never know, being around, if they encounter Harry again, they might be able to piece it together. Because especially if they give it the photo to Carl, Carl might be able to be like, that might be Harry Bosch. Because, you know, he's obviously with all this investigation and stuff like that, every, him being on trial and everything, he'd probably be more familiar with Harry. So if, without the hat tattoos, even with his head, like, he might be the one to kind of point Alex and Lev in the right direction still. So that might be something um, to keep in mind going forward. So... And another angle to this episode is that Mo and Harry are looking into um, Dominic, which I love that at one point Mo uses Google. He's like, wait, did you just switch to a different search engine? He's like, yeah, it's called Google. Harry's almost like, I kind of sometimes wonder why do I even bother paying you? Like, what are you good for? If you, This is just you doing the basic of basics. It's like, yeah, might be the basic of basics, but you still didn't um, do it yourself. So, But still, um, once again, kind of another sad aspect of the episode. We find out, sadly, that Dominic died in 72. He, uh, because they noticed, like, oh, he never renewed his license. I was like, that's... So I was like, either he went off the grid because the reason why he did that, or it's like, right, maybe he couldn't. It's like, Harry went to, like, the sad thing of maybe he died and couldn't um, renew his license. And so they ultimately do look into it. He got uh, drafted in Nam, and he died a little bit before his 20s. So it's like, man, that's so tragic. I mean, first and foremost, the fact is his mom's circumstances being what it is. He being adopted, growing up, uh, being a medic uh, at that time, and being, you know, killed in action. So and having to bring that news to Vince, which they do, what she does. So, um. And Vance talks about, you know, they meet at the place where his dad is buried. And it's like, right, like, my dad had so much money, it's like, more money you can spend in 10 lifetimes. And he's like, right, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, because we all end up in the ground the same way. He's like, so there's, like, kind of nothing left behind. But Bosch is like, no, like, obviously, that's not 100% the case. That's why you're worried about your legacy. Because it's more, like, what we leave behind is what's important. Because, I mean, at least... Harry's legacy it might not just be like all the cases he worked. I think maybe first and foremost, it's probably Maddie. And especially the route that she's going down, that's his legacy. But breaking the news to Vance, and Vance is like, right, uh, can you find anything else about my son? Because that's all Harry really knows. But he did contact Olivia because he looked at... I, I wonder, is that a, um actual thing? I didn't know that was a thing. I wonder, is it specifically related to that, or could you find that even for, like, a... Is there, like, a, a board for those, uh, like, a, like, a 9-11 situation? Because uh, I know, you know, there's the, the 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 wall with their names and such. I wonder, can you find, like, an online one? And, like, is there kind of, like, a message board almost like that? And it's people talking about um, Dominic knowing him back in the day. One person knew him from high school and stuff. I'm assuming that's who Olivia is, someone who knew him. Like, she's... Because she... Like, it's... At the very least, the oldest post Harry went to was, like, 2016. But every year, she makes sure to post something, I think, on his birthday. Or maybe... maybe It might even been, like, the anniversary of his death. But I think it was his birthday. But um, even 45 years later, it's like, I haven't forgotten you. And so part of me was wondering... And I think this might be the setup they're going now. That he might have actually... I mean, he was young back then. So, but, you know, that was a day and age where it's probably, like, maybe something happened. Like, maybe he wanted to come back home because... Either Olivia's going to be... Like, the fact is... Because if he's gone, then that's that. I feel like the story would end there. But I think because of the whole Olivia angle, I think it's going to it's going to be that uh, Vance, uh, Whitney, he has a... Whitney Vance. I don't know why I did that backwards like that. But uh, Vance has a, um, a grandchild. I think Olivia and Nick were together and she might have gotten pregnant. Uh, probably, maybe she found out before he was deployed... And, you know, uh, so that that's where I'm leaning more towards because it just it'd be too sad just to leave it at that. But it's going to complicate things if he does have a if, it, um, if they do have a child together because uh, Harry is going to meet with her because she does call him later on. But the problem is he is being trapped. So he does like rent another vehicle. Sadly, it doesn't mean anything because um uh, Home dude, uh, what's his name, Crichton or whatever, is uh, trailing him with like a drone or something like that. So they still got eyes on him. And it's like, right. 
Because uh, the moment he leads them to Olivia, they're going to start questioning Olivia about like, oh, okay, so why did Bosch meet you? Like, what's your correlation? What's your connection to Vance? Like, was it an affair type of thing? Do you have some... Ch like, what's going on there? So, they're still in the dark about it all, luckily. But, I wonder it's Sloan in contact with home dude like he said he was. Go once again, I wanted to give Sloan the benefit of the doubt. Be like, no, 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 you're not going to help them out. But maybe he still is. We'll have to wait and see where things kind of go on that front. But, um, yeah, as you can tell, things are going to get more complicated. But, like I said, I'm leaning more towards, having not seen episode four yet, I'm leaning towards, like, Olivia had a child. So, uh, Vance actually has a grandchild who has legal rights to this. Which, once again, is going to get nasty because um, they're a legitimate heir to the situation. New C CEO dude that's supposed to be taking over afterwards isn't going to be too happy about it, and that's going to turn nasty. But um, obviously, you know, Vance doesn't have much time, and uh, I want him to have some semblance of peace, get to meet his... Because he wants to know as much as possible about his uh, son, and I think Olivia could tell him more about who his son was. Because even look, looking at those messages, you hear and think about the way people talked about him back then. It's just like, and it, this is years later, people remember him. It's like, yo, I remember who you were. You know, and the fact is that, because um, I think it was even Olivia, like, right, um, the fact is that he was willing to go out there and sacrifice himself, you, you know. We should never kind of regret someone's uh, choices that they make in the long run. I, I think it was something of that nature. So, once again, we'll ultimately have to wait and see in the next episode where all of this ultimately ends up taking us. Uh, but really, that's all I want to talk about. So, the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.